I'm Ryan Durbin from RD Ceramics, and I'm located in Southgate, Kentucky. And I'm Becca Otis from Five Lines Pottery in Monroe, Washington. And welcome to Wheel Talk. Hey folks, thanks for listening to Wheel Talk. We would love some more interaction with you all throughout this future episodes, and we would love to hear some listener questions. They may get on the episode. Yeah, just submit them to wheeltalkpodcast at gmail.com, or you can submit them on our Instagram at at wheeltalkpodcast. Thanks. Bam. That was way too early. <laughs> did you get it or do we need to do it? I got honest? it. You I said it. bam too early. I got, it. I got it. Oh, fine. Sure. I got it. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Becca. Happy Memorial Day. Yes. Oh, hey, I have some exciting news that I'm telling you and now that everybody will know before cool. we get to how are you doing. Uh, my friend Andrew uh, is getting a t-shirt printer. A t-shirt so, printer? Sweet. Yeah. Ooh. I got... So Okay, can, I see where this is going. Yeah, so we can get like merchandise and shit like that. Ooh. And, um, what's a, what's a t-shirt printer? Is that like a screen printer? No. It's like it prints off the ink and stuff and you heat press it to the t-shirt. Oh. It's like legit. That's cool. It's a really expensive printer. They got it so that he can do merchandise and stuff, but then I get the hookups because I'm a friend. So yeah. that'll it'll be cheap to produce, potentially. And I get to learn how to do it, which will be fun. Nice. That's so, what I always wonder about those people that do like wholesale clothing. It's like, you got to buy so much stuff and hope that you can sell it. Yeah. And then how do you know what sizes to get? Because you have no idea unless you get a lot of orders up front and then they're kind of made to order. And right. You, well, and that's drop. the thing, you know, like you can order it out and then you have to know. Or you could buy a printer and then you can print it on demand, you know? Yeah. And just have the backup t-shirts and be like limited in the t-shirt part. So, yeah. But that'll be fun. That'll be like a fun little schmear, schmear, schmear. We should probably make mugs too. That would be really smart of us. That would be cool. Like a 3D printed like wheel talk and then just like stamp it. Or something. We could do that. Or, or like a you like your little prints and stuff. You're. I'm working on decals right now. Yeah. Decals. Ooh, even better. That'd be cool. That'd be fun. Yeah. I've never done decals before. You know what we should do? Oh shit. Oh, you know the brain's the brain's turning. <laughs> what you thinking? We should get a mug from every person that's on the podcast. Yeah. And then put a decal on it. For us to keep, or who keeps that? No, to sell. To sell? Yeah. How are we going to get all of these mugs from all these people? Well, we'll buy You're them. You're saying we get like a few upsell. mugs from these people? No, just one. Just one. We'll make it very desirable. So limited edition yeah. Rebecca Graves mug that has wheel talk right. decaled on it. <laughs> and it won't be like absurd, you know, like definitely not like a huge decal, but we could put it on the bottom and says wheel talk episode, whatever. 36. 36. Five, I think. Whatever. And, um, and that could be like the commemorative wheel talk mug. That'd be freaking oh, fun. That would be like so in idea. demand. Would it be? I mean, it would be fun. Uh, I'm just thinking, like, okay, we buy this mug. Who gets the money from it? Do we, like, split it with the person to, like, thank them for coming on and then we get a portion of it? No, I don't think we need money from it. We'll just we'll just get the mug from them and then we'll just sell it at a cost of what... I don't know. We'll figure that out later. Because it's one mug. But we'll we have to out. pay our dues for the um, podcast, so we could just put it towards that, yeah. too. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. I have some news too. What? I have news too. What's the news? I got a kiln. Yes! <laughs> oh my god! Did, so, did you get the L and L? Yes, it is not yeah. a new kiln. It is a Fucking new to me yes. kiln. Yes. I was just telling Josh yesterday that you had to get that kiln. Like you texted it to me and I was like, I hope he jumped on that without waiting for my approval because <laughs> I went and looked at the oh. link and it was like 
the person like commented on there and I was like, I didn't see you comment and I was so upset because it would have been though. perfect. What? I did comment on it though. Oh, well maybe a little late. I don't know. Were you the first one? No, I was the second one. Oh, but she gave it to you. Well, the first one decided he wasn't ready to get it. So he was fine with letting me um, buy it. So. If this isn't the most fate moment of all time, I don't you know, know what I, is. I saved this. I was like, Rachel, if for some reason you see something or whatever, like don't share this to Becca if you can, because I want to hold mm-hmm. out. And tell that was her the, the best podcast. surprise ever. Thank you. <laughs> I legit thought that you passed it up because I actually was, ca- I called Josh yesterday. And I was like, the most perfect kiln for Ryan came for sale. And I think he passed it up. And I was upset. Well, it wasn't pass it up. It was like somebody beat me to it. Yeah, somebody beat you to it. But still, I'm so excited that you got it. It looked like it was in great shape. It was. Yeah, she got it, it from... It is. She got it from like a school auction. Dude. And it was... Have you already fired it never, yet? She never fired it, but they used it at a middle school or a, something like that. So they used it, you know, you know how Five like times. middle schools, they probably didn't use it a ton. So it was in really good condition. They've got the little, I the little am, canals for the elements. and I am literally more excited about you getting a kiln than me getting a $35,000 loan. Like, that is, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> so, I didn't even look up the model until just before this, because I wanted to see what the retail price was. What's the cone that it goes to? It goes to uh, 2350 I think. Okay, cone so eight. I think it's cone. No, it's cone ten. That's cone, cone 10. ten. Yeah. So I looked it up on L- LNL side. It's an E twenty three T, I guess. Um, it says it retails for thirty five twenty five. Dude, Ryan, yeah. Ryan, I demand that after this, after we talk to Josh. Well, we're not talking to Josh right now, but after this, we will talk to Josh. But after that, you have to video chat me, and I want to see the kiln. Okay. It the is insides. not all hooked up, but you That's you okay. Know. I hear but I got it for $700, are, so, I mean. I hear that the LNLs are great, and also the changing of the elements is super easy, and the zone control is great. The only problem with the LNLs is if the zone control gets off, it's a total nightmare. But Josh has one, so he can help you fix it if you need to. Yeah, and I saw there are three thermocouples. Each band has a thermocouple, which is yeah. awesome. Yep. So oh my I'm gosh, looking that's... forward to it. Hallelujah. Oh, when can we <laughs> announce it? I mean, when this releases, if you want, but I don't know. <laughs> I figured I you think... couldn't wait, though. I don't know that you could wait that long. <laughs> I can't. I can't wait <laughs> that I long. But I mean, but what we talk about today could be released sooner. Like, we could yeah, release, we could this, release episode this on Saturday. On Saturday. For sure. I think if so. you we'll can keep that. it quiet for a week, then I can keep it quiet for a week. Oh my god, I'm so excited! <laughs> and it's not like I'm... inside my studio walls, so nobody should really see it on my feed until. I'm so excited about your little pots. <laughs> the oh little pots god. are about to have a great bath. Yes. Oh, I also have some great news too. See, we didn't do the how how is today, but um, I have some great news too. I did a firing last night, and I've been working with these huge 12 inch platters. That are right. I'm selling so press for, molds. Yeah, I'm selling for way too little money um, to my wholesaler, but it's okay, whatever. <laughs> and um, and I'm sure she's gonna sell them for a shit ton of money. But uh, I was pressing them in the first time I tried them. I've tried draping them over, and this time I tried pressing them in and then compressing them down on the wheel as it spins around in the mold. Right. And um, I peeked in the kiln. So Josh gave me a a cool down schedule and we figured out how to do it on my kiln and I and I did it in the baby kiln. Yeah. And I got and I think I can get like 6 in there. I need new shelves for it, but um uh and I don't think any of them cracked. Nice. So did Not, your first batch crack or you just didn't like yeah, the the end like result the shape? Yeah. 75% 75% cracked. Oh, so. so that was from your first mold. Yes. They cracked. Because we okay. did like, I think I did like six or seven and like three, maybe, 
Maybe they did more than that. I don't know, but three came out okay. Ooh. So. Yeah, that's um, no good. Did you have to put alumina and stuff down because they were so big this time, or? I well, I do that all the time. That's or like a sand standard or practice. But yeah, but I'm really stoked if I can if I can keep the firings to like if I can stack the kiln with all of the all the plates in that baby kiln. I think I can get like six or seven of them in at a time, mm-hmm. and do a really Quick solid firing, firing. and yeah, and the slow cool down. It out. should be good. Yeah, so that's good. Nice. I unloaded a glaze kiln today, and it was pretty nice. Yeah. A lot of good speckled pieces. I'm so, so happy that today is just full of good news. So oh, much did good I news. tell you? Did I tell you that I got the loan? You, I mean, yeah, you did. I think on our last recording we talked about it. Okay, good. You got the I loan could... officially, and then you thirty five thousand is what you said. Yeah. Is what but... you said earlier today too, but. Yeah. I regretted it immediately. I was like, I should have gotten way less because I just didn't. So it was rate. up to you to decide how much you wanted to take it for. Okay. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to pay it off at the end of the year, so it should be fine. Yeah. Um, That's the plan, at least. Uh, Anything else? I don't think so. I mean, I had you a really had productive off. day in the studio. I had the day today's off from mo- my day job. Today's Memorial Day. Yeah, so I got to hit the studio hard today. Uh, yesterday, I I didn't do too much in the studio because I was doing the kiln stuff. So which kiln are you going to throw in the garbage? <laughs> Not in the garbage. <laughs> Sell it to somebody. So oh, God. that's what I was wondering about. I think, I think I prefer to upgrade so that both I have two computer kilns. I think that's what I want to do. And I think I have enough space. Uh, do you have the right plugs? So I'm going to have to upgrade the plug anyways because it's a, a 50 amp or 48 amp kiln. My, so you need 50? my plug now is 40. So I need a 50. Even uh, for the other a... kiln? What? Even for the big kiln? The big kiln is on the 40 amp breaker. Oh, I didn't know that. Hey, could you just add a plug? You have two plugs? I could. Why do I do want that. two plugs? Just so I can fire it? Because do if that. I'm going to rewire it, just put a second plug there? Fuck yeah. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, so like, if you could just leave it plugged in all the time, it's safer. It's, like, better for the the plug. It's better for the kiln. Or if you could, if instead of pulling wire out of a existing receptacle, and you're going to have to do all the exact same work. Yeah. The only well additional equipment that's going to need to be bought is additional pipe. Well, I mean, it also depends if you have enough power, too. you got to make sure that you have enough. Oh, that's true, yeah. Wattage. Uh, I don't... Amperage, I don't, but... I don't know if I do. I think I have one more empty spot. It might be enough for that. Yeah. yeah. That'll put me in capacity, though, I think. But we'll see. Yeah. But your dad will know. He's, he's an electrician, so... Yeah. That's the main reason that she decided to sell it was because... The electrical work to get this thing hooked up. She never, she never used it because the power didn't account for it. So she was gonna have to pay like five hundred and fifty bucks to get the electrical work done to be able to wire it. Oh my god, that is literally peanuts. <laughs> like, so, so she was going just... to sell this kiln and then a couple other ones and get one really nice kiln that works with existing, yeah, stuff. I think. Can I just tell everybody out there in the in the 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 world of kiln buying, five hundred dollars? Well, I think I paid three hundred dollars to hook up my first kiln, and they like brought it from my panel and all that crap. But electricians need to get paid too. Just pay the money. Like five hundred dollars is nothing in the grand scheme of things. You'll make that much in the first load, or you should. So. That's it. Well, also, she was shifting her work, so she wasn't filling that big kiln. I think she was shifting yeah. from making Dude. production slipcast stuff to oh, yeah. more like pipes and stuff that are smaller. Yeah. Ryan, this is so good. So this it, the stars just aligned, and it's I'm so looking excited. To yes, this is. I'm so excited for you to have your first firing, and you're going to be like, Especially, you should be able to see how many firings that kiln has had. If you plug it in. Oh, you can 
you can see and it'll probably tell you how many firings oh that'll be exciting i wonder if you could plug it up without running it and it would still work on a 40 amp just to see the computer side probably Uh, i would i would call your dad and ask him if it would fry it or not like if like if i'm not gonna fire the kiln but i just want to turn the computer on yeah might be a different plug too i've had to change the plug out for almost every kiln i've had i think the plug work is the right size it looks exactly yeah. like the ones I have, so. I don't see why you couldn't. It's not going to take that much electricity. Yeah, I don't see why you couldn't at all. Uh, cool. But um, don't do that before you ask an electrician. Mm-hmm. That's my word to the wise. I mean, the electrical box doesn't have to be hooked up to anything. It could just be the box with the plug. Because it's already right. disconnected right now anyway. So if it's not hooked up to any elements or anything... Why would it pull that much energy? Yeah, it might error out. Who knows? I don't know. So we'll see. All right. What are we talking about today? I don't know. You tell me. (laughs) (laughs) So I was like, hey, Becca, why don't we talk before we get with Josh? Because one, I secretly wanted to share this news. And also, I wanted to... You should have shared it with Josh. We would have both been yelling at you. And I also wanted to chat about my show that I had this weekend because it was my first outdoor show of the year. I got a bunch of questions from people, a bunch of good job from people and whatnot. And just wanted to kind of chat about how that show went, how it was run, what I expected, what I got from it. Yeah. And stuff like that. So... Let's get the cat out of the bag first. You did good. I did well. I sold I sold $560 worth at a farmer's, at a farmer's market. market. It was 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. So what else would I be doing at that time on a Saturday? That's 100 bucks an hour. Wait, 9 a.m. That's four hours. Eh, that's more a little more than, than 100, 100 bucks, bucks an hour. hour. Yeah. yeah. And I paid 25 bucks for the booth. That's what's up. If you can find a oops, if you can find a magic farmers market, do it. That's where that's where you got to find your your balance of okay, am I expecting to sell that much at a farmers market? No. no. But if I spend 25 bucks for the booth or 10 bucks for the booth and I'm not you know, putting out a ton of effort and time taking yeah. away from something else that I could be doing in the grand scheme of other time commitments i have right now shows are not on the agenda so if i can dedicate four hours to do yeah a pretty low effort show well plus the setup and tear down so an extra well let's say six hours total yeah but it's still like one little booth i mean that's a piece of cake. yeah and it was very limited selection so it was super easy super easy yeah. and yeah i mean and of other outdoor shows, I have zero dollars of income from other outdoor shows this year. So, <laughs> yeah. hey, if so, I get started somewhere. There's no losing on this one. Yeah, so I sold a little over 560 bucks, and we had, so the way the, the show is set up, it's in like a two-block area. Mm-hmm. It was the, I don't even think I told you what the show is. So it was the Covington Farmer's Market in Covington, Kentucky. That's okay. Northern Kentucky, right across from since downtown Cincinnati. Yeah. And it's on like a two block stretch. Customers enter at like a fork and mm-hmm. then it's a T street. So it kind of goes two blocks from the middle of the entrance. And customers go in and wash their hands at the hand washing station before they enter. Mm-hmm. They made a requirement starting this week that everybody had to wear masks with vendors and customers yeah so like with that single entrance right they make sure to you know filter people out like hey you need to be wearing a mask right i hope they have little ones for sale for like a buck i think they they probably did i i, I, I think it's like that booth but it's it's i have no problem with with people like businesses saying you have to wear a mask to come in here but but if you don't have them available, yeah, then uh, it's then you're not just... fair to to be like you have to wear a mask. Then 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 you're like oh, I can't offer you one. Yeah, it seems <laughs> a little discriminatory, money. right? 
Yeah, I can't offer you one even for money, but you have to wear it. It's, um, so. I mean, like, some people don't have news. Like, like Costco's are requiring masks right now, which I think is fine. Like I said, totally Yeah, we went to totally Costco fine. a few days ago and saw that. But if they don't have a thingy at the beginning saying, hey, you can buy a mask right here, and you'll just add it on or whatever, then, like, what about the people that don't have a TV or, or like, go on the internet? Like, there are people like that. <laughs> like, like yeah. there are people that are not actually connected to the world. <laughs> so, anyway, moving on. So, masks everywhere, and so they did the hand washing, and then they have a one-way path, so... They okay. kind of have a center spine that has kind of cones with caution tape down the middle so that people have to stay on one side of the path. Do people literally have to see every single booth? No, you can just walk. They're, oh, okay. the So picture a street. You know how wide a street is, and the, yeah. the tents are on the sidewalk. They Got do it. that to prevent people from walking behind the booths and trying to mm-hmm. bypass the kind of the entrance at that certain spot, so... Everybody's on the sidewalk. You have you have a whole street width, plus I think that street also has car parking at the curb, too, so it's even wider. Yeah. And down the middle, so down the dotted line of the street, there's the caution tape splitting. Okay, the, the directions. The direction. It's basically and then there's a little, road. Yeah, so there's little carrots on the road to kind of direct people like, hey, go this way, follow the carrot path and there's like signs to like follow this and then when you want to go to a booth like there's a little kind of chalk um design on the ground in front of the booth that you want to go to and you kind of like approach the booth that way and then if somebody's already there then you don't approach it yet you kind of wait six feet behind them and there's plenty of room for people to like line up was there a ton Um, of people it wasn't a there was a ton of people at the beginning Mm mm-hmm And then it kind of tailed off, and then it was pretty steady throughout the day. Yeah. So the beginning, a lot of people got there and kind of picked up their their pre-orders. A lot of the businesses, they tried to encourage the the farmer's market actually hosted like a list from each vendor that wanted to provide a pre-order list, and then people would pre-order on their website or whatever. And like I think the bakery across from me, that's the only thing they have were pre orders because they just came with like two car fulls of of bagged pre orders. So they must have had like eighty pre orders. And that was their business throughout the whole day. So they were lined up in the morning and I was like, dang, what are they doing? But they're all just picking up pre orders. So it's already paid for, they're just picking up bags of bread Mm -hmm. or croissants or whatever. You should try and do that next week. So I did a, I did a pre-order ish. Um, I basically just said, hey, you could buy stuff on my Etsy and then set your local pickup and yeah, you can yeah, pick yeah. it up there. So I had one customer that bought something last weekend, and then she said she wanted to pick it up this weekend. So I did have one pre-order, but the rest of them were, you know, just regular customers that were just shopping. So yeah, yeah. So I had kind of the approach to the tent, and then if people aren't there. And the tents between each other were at least 10 feet between a tent. So that's, that's going to be standard from now on. So they're pretty spread out and, you know, plenty of room. And I was, let's see, how many tents were there? Probably, probably 25 or 30 maybe. Hmm. Nice. So it was pretty, pretty small. I don't know. And, you know, pretty steady throughout the day. A lot of food handmade you know bakery um a lot of like uh beef and stuff like that there's some like fresh flowers and plants and things like that so i guess typical farmer's market stuff we're gonna have farmer's markets but uh i don't think they're allowing non-food items yeah the reason they allowed it this week is because they opened retail on may 20th uh this past week so they told me on tuesday i think like hey um great news you can sell this weekend if you'd like because they're opening retail in the state and we're allowing vendors to sell that are not food yeah. and you just can't host like entertainment or anything like that anything that would congregate people so mm-hmm. there's no musicians there that would typically be there 
and things like that. So I was able to sell, I think I was the only one that actually sold anything outside of food that was typically at the farmer's market. So I was nice. kind of the first dip in the in the pool there. Maybe that's why you made so much money. They're Maybe. Like, something that's not food. <laughs> So it was it was a little bit weird with the setup of the booth because for the most part the the event is kind of contact free so you're supposed to have your items behind you and then there's I think they called it a customer interface table so you had like a table at the front of your booth and that's where your customers were to approach and then you could interact with them there but they're not supposed to be interacting directly with your product mm -hmm. so they kind of like tell you what they want to see so i had at my booth i had planters stamped planters berry bowls mini planters with the air plants which are basically like shot glasses and then spoon rest soap dishes you know all those kind of things in that that one item i make and then a mug rack that had the the hanging mugs i love how so that all was your your new stuff is in this like you're just like screw the old stuff and you yeah like... so i was trying to think of what t for the timely stuff with spring and everything i mean i've been cranking out planners like crazy and i'm like i need to sell some of these <laughs> yeah. so and i figured you? those would you sell well did, obviously and the berry bowls sold well i didn't look at my numbers but i think i sold three or four berry bowls okay and those retail for 35 bucks nice. so it sold pretty well and sold a handful of planters. The only thing that was weird, it was hard. It's hard for customers to pick out like a mug to say like, That's I like hard. that mug without yeah. feeling it and touching it and picking it up. Yeah. So it was a little bit tough there. For the most part with the planters, it was easy because they were just like pointing out, hey, I like that one over there. That speckled white one. Can I see that one? Yeah. And then I show them and I kind of hold it sort of close to the table so they can see it closer up and say like this one's stamped and they're like yeah i'll take that one and and then it's like do you want a tray do you want the matching tray do you want the speckled tray what do you want and Ooh, that was pretty tell us easy. how the tray situation went so most people got the matching trays okay good then now you know and the only the only forms that look good with the raw trays are the speckled clay. I feel like mm -hmm. the white clay with a color on Let's say it's a blue glaze mm -hmm. with a white clay. If the bottom is just white and raw clay, it just doesn't look as good. It stands out too much, and it just looks kind of unfinished to me. Right. But, but yeah, so the the – planters did well i need to look at my analytics and see like what i actually sold but i sold a good mix of things i would say the items i sold the least were probably the mini planters with air plants so those mini planters maybe i need to get in the air planter game but i mean they look really nice too they brought color to it you could see on my uh if people look at my post from today uh monday on memorial day you could see kind of a look at the table with the mini planters and i had yeah. signs I had signs on my front table with the uh, the names of what I had and then the price of that thing. So the signs helped, I think. People just came to the table and saw what I had available and the prices. Yeah. And then they're like I mean they they sort of didn't understand that the things on the back were planters. Some people thought they were for candles or something. Yeah. So I was like when they approached and they were looking, I was like, Okay, so what you're looking at, everything on the back row here on the tiers are planters. And then I would pick one up and say, all of them have a hole in the bottom, and then you could buy them with or without the tray, so-and-so. Yeah. And then, like, these are berry bowls over here. Some people didn't understand that those were berry bowls. They thought they were, like, an orchid planter or a pot, which somebody actually bought one for that purpose <laughs> with a, a spoon rest. So she bought it, like, a pear. So that was kind of interesting. But and then they almost like didn't see the mugs because they were kind of like behind me a little bit hanging yeah but yeah so a that's lot of hard. that a I lot mean, of that's back hard. and forth i feel like there should be a way for them to like be able to pick up a mug and you like spray it with lysol or something you know so i mean they weren't like they weren't like the strictest like hey don't touch that you yeah. can't have them touch so 
some customers would come around and they would say, can I come around and like, look, I won't touch. And they kind of get closer to like, look at the pots or yeah, look at, you know, the different colors. Cause they can't see it from like six feet away yeah. into the booth. Maybe, especially if they're older, maybe they can't see that well. So they just kind of got closer. And then a few people came over at the end of the day and were looking at the mugs you know, they had masks on and everything, but they were touching like every mug and I'm not, I'm not like confrontational. So I'm not going to be like, Hey, can you not touch that please? Right. So for me, I don't want to potentially like hurt a sale to say like, Hey, can you please not do that? I would rather like let them do that. And then at the end, I'm going to sanitize my hands. And I was basically done for the day anyways. That was the last sale. So I was putting it right in the box right after they left anyway. So I wonder if it would be a smart practice just to bring some Lysol spray just in case, you know, so yeah. you can just spray them down really quick. Yeah. And then, That's like a good just, idea. you know, some of that, you know, the Lysol. Cause it's on a rack on. so I can just spray. Like, yeah, exactly. I think that might be a good idea. Miss the whole rack. Well, in that way, if somebody, I mean, you can always too, if somebody wanted to touch something, you could hand it to them. They could hold it and then put it on that table in front of you and you could, Make sure that that's oh, separate so yeah. you can spray it down and then put it back up. That's true. That's a good point. Yeah. I could do so, that. yeah. Just make so sure that, was... that you're spraying them all first. Like at the beginning of the day, spray them all down. Mm -hmm. You know, get them all sanitized. And make sure you're telling people, I sanitize the mugs. So, like, wash them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I'm totally that person that if I buy a mug from a vendor, I just use it immediately because I have no cares in the world about the germs. But um, I'm sure, so I'm sure there's people like me out there that would buy a mug and then just fill it up with water or fill it up with coffee. Uh, yeah. But really, you should wash your mugs. <laughs> I wonder if it's an, um, I'm thinking of how I'm going to do it for the show on the 6th. I think I'm going to have more room to put stuff out and it's going to be, a. Yeah. I think it's going to be a little heavier of a day than it was this weekend. So. Right. We're getting into I don't, June. I, I don't know if I need a sign that says, please sanitize your hands before you touch anything or did if you I have need hand a... sanitizer? I did. Yeah. I would say that you like before picking up any products, please hand sanitize. Yeah. So that's possible. I could do that. Better safe than sorry. I, I could. Some of the vendors also had like a rope across all of their um legs of their tent so it was like hey do not enter the tent kind of thing yeah so everything inside the tent was past a rope so they couldn't like actually get around, get around and get inside because believe you me they will they will get around yeah so i'm inside. wondering if i should at the next one put a table in a way that separates us and everything is still behind me and they still have to approach me because I'm still going to be interacting one on one with people. It's not going right. to be three people in the booth. It's going to be one person, two people max. Yeah. And I think the more I can control who's touching what is going to be better. Yeah. So I think the spray huh. would be good. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I mean, I think you should definitely have it just in case anyway. Yeah. yeah. One other thing they had throughout the day was every every hour on the hour they would have they had like a little megaphone or something and the organizer would be like attention vendors it is after 11 o'clock please pause what you're doing uh sanitize your customer interface tables and sanitize your hands so they would like mm -hmm. remind people at the hour on the hour to like pause do that kind of reset the booth a little bit yeah so that was kind of interesting. Ray, I told Rachel that she was like, "Man, that seems like Big Brothers, like telling you." Yeah, to what stop. a what a world we live in. <laughs> so it's like, hey, I got to do what I got to do. I'm not going to complain about it. It's like, yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of the gist of the day, and I would say the customers that came to the booth were already a little more interested in the product. You know, they're at a show. You're going to get a lot of browsers that aren't going to really intend to buy but they want to touch and they want to pick up stuff and they want to like ask yeah. you what this is and what's that and how do you do this or whatever i think it was i'm gonna to have to get used to the more transactional interactions with people yeah 
and yeah, it's going to be a little more, just going to have to get used to that. It's a little bit yeah. different, but. I'm really, I don't, I'm like really struggling with if I want to do How are you going to maintain a 20 by 10 booth like that? Well, here, Are you going to cut it down? I'm really struggling with, and, and my booth is like literally designed for people to walk into. I'm really struggling with the, fa- with basically the, the, um idea of not even doing Leavenworth this year really? and for those of you who don't know Leavenworth is uh it's an art market in a tourist town just an hour and a half away from me that I go to every weekend in the summer from May to October um yeah I'm like I don't know I just are you worried about the unknown of people not coming or of the no. headache of having to keep up with sanitizing and it's going to be so much work on you to clean up after people it's not even that it's more the um the shop i don't want to you want um, the shop to be in good hands or you don't want to be out of the picture when the shop is there on the weekend and you can't yeah i mean we've already hit like hard i i have enough money to hire somebody but like now i didn't you know a week ago but um we I'm, I'm concerned because I'm going to have to find somebody to watch the shop. And this year, it's a little different because this year I'm going to have to find somebody to watch the shop three days out of the four days, or three days out of the three days that I would be there, as opposed to last year where it was only two days out of the three days. So Sundays, I never had to worry about it. But my shop's open on Sundays now. But on top of that, we are so not even close to getting out of phase one. Our county... Yeah. Like my county, Snohomish County, King County, which is down from us, and then Chelan County, which Leavenworth is in, are all um, not even close to getting to phase two, which is opening up retail. And um, like we have to, it's some, it's like we have to have less than 10 deaths per 100,000 people, or not deaths, um, less than 10, that sounds morbid. Less than 10 cases per 100,000 people. Uh, per day or something? Per day for 14 days. Okay. Wow. So it like resets it that clock every out, day that it comes. Yeah. It, it basically comes out to for 14 days, we have to have less than 85 cases of um, new cases. New cases of the coronavirus. And we are at like 350. But there's also more testing these days with everything, I would assume. More testing now than there was a month ago. So the cases are going right. to increase significantly because people that are asymptomatic might be getting tests now. Right. And Which they means we're not going to open until right. August. <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't know if it's until August. But certainly, I mean, I don't foresee. It's looking the, pretty tough. Yeah, and it's not even it's it's totally data driven. So, and it's not like it's not political. Like you know, your no. decision is that what you're saying? Your decision to not do Leavenworth, or you're talking about the, the yeah, decision no, with the state? Just like the county even opening up to do it. Oh, for okay. one, like we haven't even allowed it to happen, and then once it does allow it to happen, I'm gonna have to figure out how to make the store super sanitized and all that crap. And having and how do you that teach stress, somebody else to do it? Right, and having that stress, along with the Leavenworth stress, and then along with me coming back and making all the crap for Leavenworth, is yeah, just, it's just, it doesn't way seem... Yeah, I'm going to have to wear a mask 100% of the time, and in dry eastern Washington heat, I foresee that as being very annoying. <laughs> I, yeah. And, and which isn't a deciding factor by any means, but that's just kind of like a little, it's like a little frustration, but, um, and, and so I don't know. I, and then I was like, I, part of me is like, man, I'm just, should just not do it. I'll keep continuing to do online sales and then I'll just go visit my friends. (laughs) Does the, does the time and effort in stuff like that involved affect your decision with, uh, the extra headache of maintaining a booth that's sanitized and driving to and from Leaven- Leavenworth and being there camped out for three days a weekend and yeah, all a little that. Bit. 
Yeah. I know it's going to be gangbusters, but at the same time, we've already lost almost half of the season. Well, yeah. we will lose almost half of the season, probably. Is it pretty flexible where you could pick up certain days that you want, certain weekends that you wanted to do if you were to get good, good feedback from people that do it? Yeah, I could. But then at that point, it's like, is it even worth it? Leavenworth's like a long term goal, not like a short term game. It's a long term game. Yeah. So it's like, you may not make a ton of money one weekend, but you go insane the next weekend, you know? And it's you can an make overall. up for that at your paint a pot if you put in the time. And- if I put in the extra effort and put in the marketing and stuff, I can. So I think that that's... And then you could be around the shop to help with your online stuff if you want to shift right. to that a little and bit. My, or- yeah, and my sales went down last summer because we're in the Pacific Northwest. Everybody goes hiking and all these things. But I also like really lacked on... On marketing last summer because I was gone. And so I think that, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm i really strongly kind of leaning towards no Leavenworth this year and then just picking it back up next year. Because yeah. we can. It's not like it won't. Yeah. It won't be frowned upon by any means. And that decision's decided upon based on your shop situation. I know yeah. a lot of people I hear are saying, I'm maybe it's like reading these art fair review facebook or who comments people are like i'm can't i'm uh canceling all hopes of anything for the rest of the year and maybe even 2021 like i don't know so it's like i don't i mean i'm not i'm not that um i'm not that crazy about it but it's like i'll take it as it comes and we'll see how they go and i'm assuming we're going to be safer and safer (laughs) with the events we'll see how the what the return is on the people shopping a lot of sellers don't think that customers have any money to spend and they're not going to buy anything and you know i just think there is money out there to be made oh yes like no one is selling any or buying anything yeah i I don't think think that's right i don't think we're really lacking money i don't believe in that so so we'll see you know one positive that i got from this weekend that i didn't expect but like started the day off really well so i got to the show and somebody welcomed me there that was i think he was a friend of the plant the manager of Mm -hmm. the event and um it was early in the day so he he didn't have a mask on yet we were just kind of getting set up and he comes and meets me and he puts his hand out to shake my hand and i shook his hand so i didn't expect it for some reason like having the um having somebody with a confidence to give me a handshake when I didn't expect it, I yeah. expected the perception of people to be like, I'm scared of everybody because yeah. they could have this invisible thing and they don't want to touch anybody or interact. Yeah. So just having that interaction with somebody that was super genuine and like, seems like nothing when this was three months ago. Yeah. Shaking that's somebody's hand be, when you meet them. But now like you really appreciate something like that's that. That's going to be really cool about coming out of this is when you shake somebody's hand or give somebody a hug. I think it's really going to mean a lot more to people, which is kind of exciting. Yeah. So I think I'll even talking to other vendors, like if I go see a vendor at a show and I see them, like I'll try to shake their hand and be like, I don't care. Like I'll sanitize after I shake your hand. I still want to shake your hand or whatever. Well, yeah. I mean, you might want to ask first. Well, I mean, yeah. But if they I like guess, stick their hand I out. I guess putting out your hand is asking because they could be like, ah, I don't want to. Yeah. And it's so good he, to respect he, the people that don't. But also, yeah. you know, I would shake your hand. Yeah, I so wanna it's shake little f- your <laughs> 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 So that was that was a positive. Some people would be like, "That's reckless. You shouldn't be sh- touching people." I'm like, whatever. I don't know. It's just something know. small that you can appreciate. And then it's like, okay, I'm gonna sanitize my hand, and I sanitize my hand. It's like not a big deal. Yep. Hey, we gotta go. <laughs> yeah. So uh, thanks for listening. And, yeah, uh, that was a good one. This was fun. Yeah, we'll we'll talk to you next time. Okay. A lot of good news on this one. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thanks so much for listening to another episode of Wheel Talk. If you'd like to follow us on Instagram, you could find the podcast at Wheel Talk Podcast, or you could find myself at R D Ceramics. That's R's and Ryan D's in Durban Ceramics. Or you can find me at Five Lines Pottery Studio. That's the number five. And don't forget. Share this with your friends, like us on Instagram, and don't forget to write a review. It helps us an awful lot. Thanks.